At all levels of war, successful manoeuvre requires agility and flexibility of thought. The ultimate expression for the Army is the Air Cavalry, a game-changing innovation that the US Armed Forces unleashed in Vietnam to hunt down and crush a cunning foe. It was the ultimate expression of speed and mobility on the battlefield, as helicopters replaced horses and vehicles to quickly deploy light infantry, whose mission was to close and kill the enemy with fire and movement, or repel his assault. Whether on foot, horse or vehicle, parachuting from an aircraft or jumping from a helicopter, the infantry needs to maneuver and adapt to an evolving situation. The air cavalry was a brilliant concept and a phenomenal reality. A combat air assault is not just transporting troops from point A to point B by helicopters, it is a dynamic and decisive operation that can quickly shift cavalry troops from less important areas to the main point in battle. The combat air assault is the peak of the attack phase of air mobility. The goal is to use a group of four to six helicopters to transport the cavalry troopers to the landing zone. As they approach, use artillery to hammer the landing zone and gunships to rake the LZ with suppressing fire. The main tenets of the doctrine are initiative, find the enemy forces with mobility and destroy them with fire. Agility, the helicopter can act faster than a grounded enemy, shift forces and combat power, field and rocket artillery within strike range. Depth, the helicopter extends the operation's space, time and resources, resupply the troops and reinforce with forces anywhere on the battlefield. And finally, synchronization. Arrange your activities in time, space and purpose, and persist the forces and combat power to produce maximum results. Ahoy, welcome back to Broken Arrows Playtest. It's day two for me, and today I thought I would set up a new deck. Something that we haven't seen before. See that Black Hawk in the background? Yeah, that's what we're aiming for. We're going to aim for the Army Air Cav deck. We don't have all the pieces yet because we only have half the specializations, but we're going to try and see what we can make it work or not. To start off with our recon, we have some Cav Scouts backed up with the Bradley, upgraded with the reactive armor just to keep them in the fight longer. Cav Scouts are a small team fitted with a Javelin, so they don't have a lot of infantry power. Next up, we have the standard IFAV fitted up with the grenade launcher just to use up the extra points there. We've got three of those. Then we also have the Scout M1A2 SEP V2 Abrams. Brum Brum Abrams. We're bringing that one. It is expensive, but that's in case we have to set up a real front line and we need to keep our Scout alive. Then we've got two Bradleys fitted up with the laser designator and they have quite a large detection radius. We've upgraded the variant and the protection system to have the Iron Fist and the Busk 3 reactive armor. So that makes it quite expensive, but they are quite resilient, I feel. And uh, we've extended their sensor range to two and a half kilometers. So that is the recon side of things. We're pretty heavy in the armor, despite us saying that it's a army air cav deck, but you'll see what I mean here. All right, next up we have the uh, mechanized engineers and they are coming in the Bradley Running this deck, we need to take small squads. So most of our most of our infantry squads will be six or eight man maximum. Then they are coming in the Bradley. Like I said, it's got an upgraded engine, so it goes at least 70 kilometers an hour. It's got the Iron Fist protection system and also the Busk 3 reactive armor. And my thoughts on this are, because I don't have a lot of infantry killing power, I want a support vehicle that can do that job for me. Next up, we have our mechanized riflemen and we they are in a six-man squad. They're okay. They've come with AT4s. They've got uh, M4A1. They've got underslung grenade launcher and a squad machine gun. They are coming in two APCs because the APC can hold 12 men. So two squads per APC. They are only there as transport vehicles. I don't really intend to use them. Only if we have to. Next up, we have the mechanized rifleman with the medium machine gun, the M240L. That will give us some good suppressive fire against other infantry squads. Then we're coming with four, four squads of the mechanized rifleman AA. So they have the FM92 Stinger, and they are quite potent against helicopters and close range jets. They are backed up with a Bradley with only an upgraded engine. This is to keep us at the same speed across all of our army. Finally, we have three Sabre teams with the TOW 2B, the top attack version, which I feel is a much better version and worth the point spend. 
coming along to our vehicles, we've got four M1A2 SEP V2 with a trophy system and the Tusk 2 reactive armor. And like I said, that this is here in case we have to get into an extended anti-tank or tank brawl. Next up, we have the M1A2 SEP V3, which has slightly better armor than the previous version and a better scout ability. It looks like the V3 also has different shells, but I can't tell you exactly how different or how much more effective they'll be. Next up, we've got the classic APC fitted with the Wally launcher, dual tow launcher, classic design on a modernized chassis. Better driver controls, I believe it's got. Then we have the M1A2 SEP, just a basic, basic front line tank, main battle tank. That just finishes out the vehicle deck, but we don't really want to play those unless we have to. Coming to support, we've got one LVSR. That will bring on up to 15,000 units of supplies, and that's just to bring it onto the map. Next, we've got the Patriot Launcher. We're going with a four missile launcher because I've realized that the two, the two missile launchers is really bad value. For the same cost as two quad launchers, you need to bring four double launchers, and that costs, you know, 480 points. So yeah, I think the four tube is just a no-brainer. And then for our artillery, we're bringing the M270 MLRS, fitted with cluster munitions there to increase our effectiveness against infantry, because I feel I'm a bit light on that. For artillery, I'm going to go with the Paladin. We've got four of those, and that should bring in 155 millimeters of pain. I will experiment. If I don't get enough value out of that, I might bring the 120 millimeter mortar MCV instead. But for now, this is just a learning experience. For close to medium AA, we have two standard linebackers, but we are going to be relying more on our man pads and our Patriots. The star of the show for the Air Cav is the helicopter deck, and we're going with four Venoms. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the Black Hawk yet or the Chinook. Two of those would be instrumental to really pull this off properly. But for now, we're going to experiment with what we've got. I'm going with four Venoms, and we are going to run them as a gunship configuration. So they'll have upgraded door gunners and also light rocket ability. So they can provide gunship support if they need to. They can also bring in 2,500 units of supply, which is almost the same as an LAV, I believe. And then our heavy lift ca uh, capacity, which is replacing the Chinook, is the King Stallion, the, the stronger of the two stallions, I believe. That will let me bring transport vehicles closer to the fight, large squads, lots of supplies, and I'm, I think it might be able to carry an artillery piece, but we'll have to test that. And that might be one of the things that makes me downgrade the size of my artillery from the Paladin to the Mortar Carrier. For gunship support, we have one AH-1Z Viper. Two Hydropods, two Hellfire Pods, and two Sidearms, which are anti-radiation missiles. Smaller range than the Harm, but uh, just as effective at killing those radar-guided anti-aircraft. It's time to finalize the deck with the air support. Now we can only select things from the marine specialization, but we'll try and make it work. We've got a heavy lift KC-130. We're going to use the Prowler here in the suppression of air defense role, going with one ECM pod and three harms. I really like this aircraft. I've heard that it's a bit of a waste of points, but I feel like they do a good job. For our ground strike, we have the FA-18 Hornet D. This one's fitted with four 2,000 pound bombs and it comes standard with sidewinders for those pesky helicopters and close range dogfights. For our BVR missiles, we've got the F-35B and a few storm breakers there to give it some ground, uh, ground attack ability. I did my best to try and build an air cav deck with what we've got. And I feel like if we just play to the doctrine, it'll do well. We just need to rely on finding a large open plan map with lots of space to move. One of the weaknesses of the way I'm going to play it is I feel like we're going to be very squishy if we get caught off guard. We found a match, let's have some fun. Now we want Central Village. Central Village, most definitely. Very nice open wide map and we are fighting the Russians. We've chosen the deck, we just need to wait for it to load in. 
Okay, so this battle, we've sort of already analyzed it in my last video. And what I think I want to do is go really wide and try and encircle around the map and cut off. Where that person is putting the, the arrows, that's where I'm going to head. I'm going to try and encircle the town from that side and try and cut off reinforcements into the town. In my limited games in this map, usually the team just rush to the city and they'll use the main road to do it. If I can encircle around and cut off that, I can sweep back into the city perhaps. Alright, so let's get some guys onto the field. We're going to bring in our mechanized engineers in their Bradleys first. We do need boots on the ground to set up a bit of a foothold. And this is the avenue of approach that we will take. Then we'll bring in our... Uh, bring in some Venoms. To start shifting troops around. We can bring in two Venoms and two Mechanized Riflemen. Our Air Cav. Right, the battle will begin in 15 seconds. Pretty expensive to bring all that infantry in. And we are risking to be airstriked into oblivion, which seems to be some of the meta that I've experienced. Here we go, the battle has commenced. Alright, the first Bradleys are on the field, and we're going to push them right up this main road until we encounter some kind of resistance. So we'll stop here at the church. While we wait for our points to accumulate, the first of our aircraft are inbound. Now the Venoms don't have the greatest infantry carrying capacity. But they're fairly cheap. A bit of a workhorse. Nice and fast. I haven't used them in this game before. We want to... How far do we want to advance before we all see someone? You can see the enemy helicopters heading towards the city down the main approach. Choppers are caught up on the trees because I gave them low flying orders. Got our third Venom coming on with the Cav Scout. Seems to be a bit of an air battle going on. The Hornets are fighting it out. Trying to airstrike all those helis coming into the city. The Russians would be able to build a pretty good deck as well, I think, for this kind of warfare. Yet to experiment with the Russian deck. If you want to see me build a deck, let me know. Alright, another Venom in with some Cav Scouts. And that rounds out our roster of light lift. First troops, boots on the ground, at our first waypoint. Now we're only coming this far because I'm just hoping that the enemy have all poured in. But I can't be certain, so we'll set up a little forward position here while we rally up the rest of our troops. All right, that first lift mission is done. We'll send them back to the waypoint. Bradleys have arrived just in time. So we'll push slightly out of the city, probably into those trees just there. Our fourth chopper arriving. And we have the Cav Scouts coming in with their specialized Bradleys. Move the engineers up into the forest. Set up a bit of a line. Just so we're not giving the enemy any chance to flank us as well. As a force, that is. If we don't encounter any resistance, then we can start peeling up further. And possibly peeling around. But we will need to have all of our forces ready to do that. One thing I do really enjoy about this game is the logistics and the, the planning phase. Just ferrying the troops around, getting their supply lines set up. I am a fan of logistics. And this, the supply system is 
engaging enough to require micro, but not so micro intensive that it becomes a chore or you have to ignore it in the heat of battle. Roger Wilco. Flight plan confirmed. Venom is mission Striking the enemy supply depots and stealing them is also a viable tactic. Right, give it to everyone on the Venoms. The Venom is in the air. They didn't drop off their scouts. I mustn't have Join told them to drop. Those choppers will be loaded up very shortly. Start bringing in the AA troopers. And I will need to bring in the stallion at some point. I was hoping to bring them all on that, but we're a bit short on points at the moment. Venom standing by. Our team seems to be advancing into the town enough. They're starting to set up a foothold. The battle is pretty even at the moment. So that gives us a little bit of time. Having five OFs five, if everyone else is concentrating on the front line, it gives another player the chance to run support, and I like that. I am playing with randoms. We've just lost one of our Venoms to an airstrike from an Su-57. He's on a helicopter hunting mission. We need to keep the rest of our team away. Fortunately, that Venom was empty. So it's just the crew that we lost. I think the SU-57 got away. For the next wave of infantry to come up to the LZ are anti-air, so that'll be all right. We are lagging behind a little bit in terms of setting up a front line. On our side, aircraft down, crashing into farmland. The sound design in this game is great, I think. One of the better features of it. The voice lines can get a little bit irritating, but that's just RTS for you. Okay, the stallion's on. It's going to bring in all of our Stinger troopers. Load them up. Should be enough room for everybody. All right, there's a heavy lift aircraft coming in. We've got the enemy have a drone up. It's just being swatted by AA. Starting to push up. Create, create a bit of a line. Troop transport, standing by. Infantry ready for combat. Venom ready. Still even in terms of capture zones. Low Just the low. two on the outside are remaining neutral. The IL-76 is being shot down. Crashing into the forest, not far from our position. Bringing on the first of our anti-air, one unit of Patriots. We've got a supply truck also bringing up supplies to set up a forward operating base. Got it. Fire only when fired upon. Going to move our scout. IFE up just so that they can keep an eye on things and not start a fight. Hey, check out this rooster cruiser they gave me. Now where will we set up the forward operating base? Probably a bit further up, I think. What you could do is just bring it onto the field, dump it right there, and then use the helis to lift it. But we'll take it halfway. 
because I want to set up a Patriot system and it will need ammunition. Just to give us a bit of a scream from high altitude airstrikes. That forest looks as good as any. Not quite on the front line, but close enough. Ballistic missiles are going up. Bring in some tow teams and the rest of our infantry. All the machine gunners. Supply depot set up. We'll send the truck back to base. Put the Patriot there. We'll keep the radar off for now so it doesn't get splattered for no reason. If we start feeling pressure from airstrikes, we'll turn it on the radar. Spread out our anti-air a little bit. We'll start moving and taking ground. Our command IFE sees nothing, so we'll keep moving. The only other real approach is that main road that we're traveling up now for the enemy. So if we're going to see anyone, they'll come screaming down that road. So we're going to stay in battle order. Spread out a bit. We have a lot of anti-tank killing power, but we are very squishy. Alright, a new batch of infantry have arrived. Helis are waiting, let's bring them to the fight. Then we will fill up the stallion with toes. Bring on the last of those. I really like the toe too. The top attack, B variant, super cool. I'm not sure if it gets defeated by and um by active protection though. So we'll have to see. Someone call for a cab? Fighting the Russians, no doubt they will have some kind of system attached to their tanks. Moving up to the next checkpoint. Trying not to bunch the infantry up too much. Combat engineers leading the charge. I'm curious whether minefields will be added, you know, the ability to drop mines over an area and therefore have your vehicles fitted, being able to search for mines. We've got cluster munitions, I don't see why we couldn't have minefields. And then the systems that can disperse the mines. Alright. This will be our second last wave of infantry before we've spent them all in the deck. Heavy lift here. Drop zone received. Realistically, I could drop some of the support vehicles off and bring more infantry. But this is just a proof of concept. Alright, the Venoms are up. Drop the troops there, it's as good as any. Fairly close to our allied line. And still no sight of the enemy. So we've got the opportunity here to set up a pretty good flanking force. But ourselves can get flanked by that road. Just running up to the top of the screen. But it would take them a minute or two to react to us once they find us. Seems the thick of the fighting is in the city. We're going to bring in the Prowler. Try and help the enemy disperse some of this AA so that those ballistic missiles can get through the screen. Zoom in on this bad boy. Let's have a look at her run. Keep her nice and low. Enemy heavy bomber coming in. 
It's a little, little bit of stutter. It must be lag. Going high, going high dropping off those hum anti-radiation missiles. I'm going to RTB. Winchester. I think we got some hits there. Wasn't paying too much attention to where the missiles went. But if their radars are on, they're going to have a bad day. The best thing about them too is they auto-fire once they detect a signal. So they're fairly easy airstrike to call in. So hopefully now some of our attackums will get through. Okay, so the next phase. Now that all the infantry are deployed, we're going to start bringing in the, the artillery support. I feel like we've still got time. We haven't been detected yet. And we've got a small allied force there watching our flank. On the road again. It's very small, but it's something. We're We're moving the Patriot up so it gives us adequate defense. New supplies are coming in. We're just going to dump them here and the choppers will take them to the battlefield. All right, so four Venoms and the uh, Stallion will take this entire stash. We've got 2,500 kilos each, and then the remaining 5,000 can go on the Stallion. And we'll drop them in a nearby forest so that any units that come under fire in their defensive positions can peel back and get supplies. Now this could all just go to hell the minute we start fighting the enemy, <laughs> but planning's good. So this will be our new forward operating area where the Patriots are. We'll dump all those crates just there. And if we have leftovers, we might even drop some in the city for our allies to consume. The Venom will be able to get into the city fairly easily if we stay low and go through the buildings. Oh, we've got another heavy lift coming in, crashing into the forest somewhere. That one landing on the major road. Right, the recon needs to move up. Very dense sea whiz <laughs> going up there. All right, we'll bring in the MLRS. All right, Venom, drop your gear. And then we might extract them from the battlefield, just so we get some excess points back. We can always bring them back. And this one's going to go into the town and help just drop off some supplies to our allies. These weapons here do consume a lot once they do get fired off. The squads run out really quickly. Alright, those Venoms have finished their mission. Bring them back. Stallion's on its way to pick up the last of the crates. The MLRS, we need to wait a short amount of time to bring the second one on. That one's fitted with cluster munitions, which will be useful in this t uh, city fight. Venom's coming down the main road. They already have some supplies ready, but we've got extra for them. Let's might even get a bit closer to the front line. So these tow launchers don't run out. All right, drop her down here. And then we need to get out of dodge. Stallion's just picked up the last of those supplies. We can bring in the last MLRS. And we'll bring the Stallion right up to the front. A 
let's put her here. Nice and low. And then that way, if something goes wrong when we eventually start our assault, she's ready to drop supplies. MLRS are going to have got a bit of a drive up the road. I think they're a little bit too heavy to go in the stallion, but I haven't tried yet. We'll see. Venoms will come out, which means we will get a little bit of money back. Let's move the front forward. We're going to try and move our MLRS into firing range of the city. So that when we're ready to put the barrage in when we're ready to assault. Using the helis to hot drop with all this AA around would be not very smart. You could definitely do the same thing with the Marines, but you would drop way more troops. Our force seems to be very specialized. How far can this thing fire? That's in range. That's out of range. That's out of range. Okay, so we need to head up to our forward operating base. Which should give us a good amount of targets to shoot at. Keeping these Bradleys here, we should move them over with the infantry. Something crashing down in the field just outside of our position. We've had no real issues with the air support coming our way. Something else coming in. Is that a missile that missed? I'm not sure. MLRS are about two or three minutes away from being able to fire. Let's have a look at their range now. All right, they're almost within range of our... I think we're going to push this objective. Let's put some fire on it. Let's see how these things go. I haven't seen the MLRS under my control. I've messed around with the HIMARS. I like the HIMARS a lot. So two fire missions out. We've got our Patriot system there. In case anyone sends an airstrike, we'll have a reply for them. I'm not too concerned about being spotted, per se. There are no enemy forces in the area. Those, those rockets are coming in, dropping their, their munitions all over that village. That's cool as <laughs> hitting everything but what we aimed it for. Scouts ready. Push the main infantry force up now. These guys, their job's going to be to cut off reinforcements when we start our push. I think I might swing my Bradleys down and steal that objective and then leave these infantry here to fight the inevitable counterattack. The Bradleys don't really have any staying power. They're fast, and they'll be able to clear out any infantry or light vehicles. Oh, we did take an airstrike, and our two Patriots failed to take down the target. But their radar is off, so their range is reduced. Right, the Cav Scouts have run into trouble. And we've got all of our anti-air team and anti-tank teams about to intercept them. That's not what we want. So yeah, we're going to peel our Bradleys down to fight that battle. That's our first contact of the mission. Let's see if it's going to pay off. To win the battle, we just need to hold more points when it ends. AA team are engaged. That's not ideal. 
any good player will send an airstrike to try and counter that um, infantry threat. They might get a nasty surprise when they realize I messed up and sent my AA troopers there instead. Get a stinger to their face. Now someone was saying there's no module damage, but this MLRS is paralyzed. It's been, its engine's destroyed. I don't think I can move it. Bradleys are engaged. Infantry squad inside this looks to be a farm. Dumping off the infantry now so they can get into the fight. Clearing them out very quickly. We need to get them into cover quickly because there's going to be a counter-attack. Alright, our Stinger's engaged with something. Russian fighter. Alright, here comes a KA-52. Our Stinger teams will be ready for him while the Bradleys clear out this rest of this farm. We need to hit the smoke before he dumps a Vika on us. Oh, he still hit one of the Bradleys. That's unfortunate. Now Stinger team took down that Russian chopper. I'm going to push forward the mechanized engineers and riflemen. A couple of units lagging behind and we need to deal with this, <laughs> this support system. We're going to have to bring in supplies to come and repair this vehicle. It won't move. Yeah, it's it's broken. Artillery mission's over. Let's go back to base. Yeah, it doesn't want to go anywhere, and it's not going to get better. At your command, sir. One of our Bradleys has suffered the same fate in that farm. We do have a chopper nearby. I could bring supplies in to help. We'll move the Patriot out of the way because I have a feeling that airstrike might be back. Yeah, that Bradley's done for. Unless we get supplies to them ASAP. Roger. We're Oscar Mike. Tell the Bradleys to pull out. We could use them to bring in more troops. There's a lot of supply trucks moving throughout the town. Enemy supplies. Let's try and airdrop in something. I haven't had great success using the, the C-130s. My marine deck has an airstrike attached to it, but it hasn't had a chance to either use it yet. I'm going to try and drop supplies there, nearby. That is asking for trouble, though. Alright, we're bringing a Viper on as well to give gunship support. Yeah, as expected. <laughs> Our KC-130 has been hit by AA. We need to form up a line a bit more. Move this infantry forward. KC-130 is down. Supplies did not arrive. I think I have to do a low altitude drop. Okay, it looks like the first of the Russian counterattack is arriving. They didn't come down the road as expected. Not the one I was expecting. It looks like they're peeling across the city. Alright, the MLRS is being repaired. We need to hurry up and get some fire support onto this town. Supplies are coming, but we're already being wasted. We need to pull out the supply helicopter. He's too late. The riflemen are too slow. I've botched this. <laughs> Not quick enough. See, what I needed to do there was when the Bradleys rolled into the town was have an airlift ready to bring choppers in and drop everyone off to reinforce that position. But we can make the most of this and push up and keep with our original plan, which was to try and pressure the reinforcements. Those poor squads in the forest are about to get melted. I was hoping my allies would help me once they saw I was taking the initiative on that angle. I would have pushed my infantry up if I saw an ally doing a flanking maneuver like this. Someone is asking for help as well, that's good, he's sending his Abrams up to try and help us. 
Now this Russian counterattack is going to run into a bit of surprise when they run into my Cav Scouts. Littered and their tow too and the building across the way. There we go. Dropping a javelin on their head. Comes in a don't know what kind of missile that was. That was not a tow. Comes another javelin, I think. That one was stopped by active protection. That one's going to hit him. Big damage to the side. Now they're sending the choppers, which we've just lost all of our AA because I didn't spread them out. So for next time, we need to build up our squads with varied weapons and keep them together. It's all a learning experience. T-14 Armata is about to lay waste to our mechanized riflemen. Let's try and bring the Viper around to take out the KA-52 and hopefully this Armata. Come in fast and hot. Come on. Missiles away. Who knows where they're going? Just as the artillery arrives as well. Well, we lost the Viper. Alright, let's reposition those so they don't get airstriked. Some of our Bradleys made it home. Two of them. Uh, let's go uh, the Prowler. No, the F-35. Let's try and get an airstrike in. Get this thing off the ba battlefield. We need to move our Patriot up closer so we have double. MLRS arriving at forward operating base. Allied choppers shot down a Russian chopper. That's going to keep our Cav Scouts alive. We're out of ammunition and out of friends. SU-57, going to come around and try and get him. Amram away, Patriot away. Hit by a Patriot. Hit by the Amram, shot down. Let's get back to base. Before we get clapped too. Too late. Inbound. We got splattered as well. FA-18 is next. He's only got sidewinders. But we're going to try and get through. Get this enemy fighter. Get him in a dogfight. He's been hit by friendly AA. Coming in hot. We're taking missiles, but downing's... Oh, we're going to get him. We're going to throw another fighter away to do it. Taking him down with the AIM-9. And clapped up. Air defense here. AA will ruin your day. Right, let's pick these supplies up and let's move up. Try and be more proactive with our artillery. Trying to bank up some points so we can bring in a second attack. We've got 12 minutes. I might try and push that farm again. They look like they're pushing our friendly line, so let's send them artillery support. Heavy bomber inbound. Our Patriot took a shot at it. These guys are still alive, still fighting. Top attack and a side attack. Good hits. We've got to be running low on rockets. Yeah, they are. Here comes the artillery on that charge. We've lost sight of it now. Let's hope we're getting some good effect. Once that volley is finished, we're going to move. 
Air defense is ready. Let's turn on the radar this time. They're still trying to find all of our CAV scouts. Bringing in more infantry. We need to start forming up a second attack. We've got 10 minutes to organize this attack. We've got to get these guys to the fight quickly. A couple of crewmen here. Try and get them back to base. Yeah, we're out of... We've got two missiles left there. We've got a couple of AT-4s. And we have what looks to be two TOW-2Bs left. So they might be able to hold on a little bit longer. Here comes in the next assault of MLRS clusters. Truck's going to bring up fresh supplies, but we're going to set up a, uh, a base across the road near that farm. Patriot went up, but the drone disappeared. So it's fired another one. That's a miss. That's a hit. Drone down. Trying to soften up that that farm. Anyone that's there, we're going to move. New supplies are coming. Drop them off across the road. I can't wait until later on in uh, towards release. There will be a replay system, so you'll be able to come back and look at your battles, see where you went wrong, be able to do replay casts. It'll be great. Because I'm no expert at this game. But I want to be. Okay. Reloading the Patriots. Turn the radar back on. Get the artillery across the road to resupply. We've got a Paladin onto the field. I don't know how effective one will be. It's just a matter of waiting for points. We've got eight minutes to marshal up an attack. Or this might go to a stalemate. And if the Russians start to push hard, we will have to react to that and try and defend if we need to. We've got some supply trucks and an, a couple of garrison troops. So let's try and take them out here. Changing it to circular attack. Getting ready to fire. There we go. Hopefully we see more effect this time. Let's go. Try and hit their supplies and their infantry. There's a few different warheads that we can experiment with. Might try high explosive next time. Haven't been able to field much in the way of other artillery. We've got one paladin out. So I may decrease the size of our artillery to something else. A mortar carrier or something like that. Surprise supplies are running low. Standing by. 
Get everyone on board the King Stallion. Nearly everyone should fit. I think maybe one or two units might have to stay behind. I like that it can carry passengers and cargo. Heavy lift here. All right, we're fully loaded. We got five squads on board. We're going to have to bring the Venoms in for the rest. Some of our infantry did survive the fight before. They're still nestled up in that forest, keeping a watch on the enemy. First Venom's on, get them loaded up. Got more on the way. I think we should get there with about four minutes remaining. Comes the next transport. Get him loaded up. Stallion's almost there. We'll drop the cargo off here. More on the Venoms. Let's go. We've got two loaded up. Got one more about to arrive. Right, dropping off those supplies. Go back for the rest of the infantry. By the time the Stallion's back... We should have our last chopper on station, and then we'll be able to fly there as a formation. I don't know how well we'll do in a charge across the fields, but we're going to have to try. We'll get them as close as we possibly can from, to the combat zone. We want to take that capture point before the time runs out. Stallion's back. I want to play this deck again, I may have to add more helis. Maybe get rid of the Viper, who knows. Let me know what you think I should do with the deck. Or what ideas do you have? Alright, hurry up, get on board. Where are we going to land? We have a bit of support, so we're going to land right in front of our line. Venoms will go first. You need something lifted? Let's Flight go, go, activated. go. Fly as close as we can, then we'll duck down low. Start the barrage. Got heli, they finally took out our infantry. Barrage is starting. Helicopters will be on station shortly. We're just waiting on the stallion. Going low. Down to the wire. We've got less than three minutes to make this work. The artillery barrage is starting. All the choppers are on station. We're ready for the attack. I really, really hope that my allies take notice of this and charge with me. One of the downsides to playing with randoms. Artillery. Let's go. Big hits. Come on. We've taken out one vehicle. Dumping flares. And troops. They're all on the ground. Select them all. Get them home. Form up the riflemen. Get the engineers ready. We're going to have to charge. We've got a force recon there that's slowly pushing up through the, the tree line. We've got some anti-air support. A couple of Abrams overwatching. Oh, we forgot to drop one of the troops. That's all right. Don't think they'll make too much of a difference, but we'll get them back into the fight. Pushing up. We've got 90 seconds to make this work. We're going to call in another barrage. Target mark, direct fire. Infantry ready for combat. 
Our man pads are firing at the heli. And we are taking fire from a Engineer. from a tank in the tree line. The AA is moving up to support our advance. I really wish they had have charged all the infantry. Everything, just charge. But given them the prompt to attack the zone, they're sending up cav scouts, our barrage is arriving. Force recon is engaged as they try to enter the farm. The AA is engaged on the ground based targets. Let's call in F-35 and the Prowler as well to take out the AA. Barrage should finish shortly. We've got 30 seconds to get through. Prowler's found no targets. He's fired two missiles. We flew him too deep. Push, 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 push. We have 15 seconds to make it. Force Recon is taking heavy casualties. F-35 did a little bit of damage, I think, on a strafing run. I'm not sure. Didn't see that, and that's the game. We didn't quite make it. Almost. And so that was... That was an interesting battle. Needed a little, more, a little bit more time. Maybe I should have waited for my first push because they didn't even know I was there. I guess it's all about timing. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you would build. What sort of tactics are you interested in? This is Broken Arrow. I'm Commander Tyrael. See you next time.